start. Looking around, good to start, folks. Yeah, my mic is my mic on. Is my mic on, folks? Yes, perfect, great. Looking good. Can we get going? Yeah. See smell, great. See Councillor Dozier, great. Uh, alrighty, good to go, Madam Clerk. Good morning. This meeting is being live streamed and recorded and will be available to the public for playback on our website in accordance with Council Policy 3.12. Committee of the Whole is the initial venue for Council to review information to ensure that Council can debate and vote on issues at a future Council meeting. No voting takes place on bylaws or resolutions during Committee of the Whole. This meeting is being conducted through the city's one meeting platform. However, we are experiencing issues with the PrimeGov solution for live meeting management that are still being addressed by the vendor. In the interim, we will not be using the system for voting and speaker management purposes. Instead, Council has been provided with voting cards, green for in favor, red for opposed, yellow for point of order. We'll manually take notes of the votes and log them into the system. To be put on the speaker list, please physically raise your hand so that the chair can add you to the list. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, and we have now called the June 20, 2023 Committee of the Whole meeting to order. And the time is now 11.02 a.m. And thank you for the overview of the meeting procedures. Uh, before we begin, we would like to acknowledge that the City of Maple Ridge carries out its business on the traditional unceded territory of the Kate C First Nation and the Quantum First Nation. And we need a motion to approve the agenda, please. Uh, moved by Mayor Rumi and seconded by Councillor Dozier. And all those in favor? Thank you, the motion is carried. The next item on the agenda is the adoption of minutes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And we have the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting on June 20th, 2023. Are there any amendments to the minutes? Seeing none, can I please have a motion to dot the minutes as circulated? Thank you. Um, moved by Councillor Carreras and seconded by Councillor Schiller. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing now, calling the question, all those in favor? The minutes are adopted. The next item on this morning's agenda is item 4.1, a delegation for, from More Than a Roof Housing Society. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome, please. Come ahead. The floor is all yours. Thank you. Uh, my partner, Graham, was not able to make it on short notice, unfortunately. Um, I believe there is a slideshow that can be... Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for welcoming us today, for your hospitality today. My name is Leanne McKaylek. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of More Than a Roof Housing Society. We are a developer of affordable housing across this great province, British Columbia. I'm here with my colleague, Don Craker. He is our Senior Director of Real Estate. And the reason that we are here today, I realize that um, you have all taken your time, and I appreciate it, to review a proposal that we had worked on a few years ago with previous mayor and council to do an affordable housing project on Dudney Trunk Road in Maple Ridge. Uh, and I have had the privilege of having some conversations as well with a few of you about that project. The reason that we are taking a bit more time today is we believe there's a little bit of misinformation about the process and the progress that was made on that on the project previously. So we want to continue this conversation and explain why we are unique in the proponents. So there was a proposal call that was sent out by previous mayor and council to do affordable housing on city owned land here in the city of Maple Ridge. We submitted among other great groups, other great affordable housing providers in the city or in the province. Um, and then council at the time made a decision to not move forward with anyone. We took a bold step and we appealed the process. And I think that's one piece of information. Just that's a point been... of order. Um, the information that you're presenting is in closed contact. It's never been uh, released publicly. So therefore, uh, the content of your presentation, the way that it's 
being presented yes. is not in public information. This is information that has never been risen and reported by the city. Okay. So um, what's your preference for me to proceed? Then? My preference is perhaps you just talk about more than a roof uh, and the content of your organization, and then we can discuss offline. Well, I can certainly do that. Um, okay. Uh, more than a roof. We've been around for 37 years. I've been the CEO for five. I've been with the organization for 25. And we develop across the province from Prince George to Victoria. We also have a project here in Maple Ridge already. We serve families. We serve seniors. We serve singles. We do addiction recovery and mental health housing. Uh, and primarily right now we're focused on housing for single seniors and families. Uh, that's what we would love to continue to do here in Maple Ridge. And we would love to partner with the city of Maple Ridge again uh, and to further the cause and, and to further the work that we're doing. Um, yeah, anything else you'd like to add, Don? Is it okay if my colleague speaks? Thank you. And again, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, 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 the reason that uh, we uh, hope to come before you today is in anticipation of a BC housing proposal call that uh, we've been waiting for for quite some time since 2021. There hasn't been one. And uh, we're anticipating a proposal call this summer. And uh, this is our opportunity and your opportunity to provide uh, affordable housing uh, in the city of Maple Ridge. Uh, CHF calls uh, come uh, only periodically without uh, uh, without any uh, consistency. And uh, so uh, we see this as a, a project in a box uh, that um, uh, really uh, needs uh, very little input from uh, the city of Maple Ridge uh, because uh, we've done all of the preliminary work as you can see on the slides if you want to um, uh, process through them you're welcome to do that and uh, so uh, what what would be required uh, from the city is to be an active participant in the CHF proposal call. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have all of the information that is necessary. The rumor is that it would be a, um, a shovel ready project. And in many respects, this is because uh, we've done the legwork already on it. And we've uh, we've had a, um, a grant uh, from, the, <clears throat> from Van City and CMHC and so uh, uh, we've actually been able to do a lot of the preliminary work for this project. So uh, what would re be required is that uh, the city of, um, of uh, Maple Ridge uh, cooperate and provide an, a letter of intent so that uh, there's assurance at the uh, provincial government level that uh, this project would, would move forward if, if the proposal call was accepted. Um, thank you to open, both open you for questions for a brief um, and before we maybe before we open it up to questions maybe could you flesh a little bit more about more than a roof and sort of maybe just thank you for taking the time to come out to Maple Ridge and and, and represent we appreciate okay. it maybe you can flesh a little bit more information about the organization about any current about any current units what your work is across Metro Vancouver just to allow us to have a more ful fulsome understanding before we proceed to more questions sure um, we have uh, around 1,900 units across the province. We serve well over 2,000 families, individuals. Uh, as I mentioned, we are a healthcare-based housing provider, and we do addiction recovery and mental health housing uh, in cooperation with the health authority. Those are very specific projects. Uh, we don't do them in all of our buildings and all of our communities. Uh, it's where the need arises. Um, the housing that we do in Maple Ridge is family housing and it's wonderful. Um, we would love to continue to do that. More Than a Roof has a great history of working with municipalities, working with developers, being a developer on our own. We work with designers and builders and construction managers. We work within other municipalities as well. Any specific things that you would like to, to have me highlight at this time? Thank you for your presentation. Again, thank you for taking the time to visit us out here in Maple Ridge. It's good to hear about the projects that you have in Maple in Metro Vancouver and also to hear about your current project in Maple Ridge. Um, now opening up to the floor for questions for more than a roof. Um, Councillor Schiller. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming out. And I feel like maybe I'm just uh, behind the curve here. I feel like I haven't seen this presentation yet. Um, so I, I would like to hear more about this specific proposal um, that you guys have, have done the design work for. Um, I'm just going to, pardon me, I'm just going to jump in here. I think maybe there was a, mis we have a bit of cross wires here. I, my understanding is that we can, we, we will, we are unable to speak about the particular project details in the open setting. I, oh. I, I apologize for the cross wires. I think there was a, some fair amount of cross wires here between we just want to make sure that we keep everything procedurally correct maybe we can keep the questions to um understanding i think maybe it's we are fairly new council around the table maybe so we can maybe a little more understanding about affordable housing provision perhaps just as some ideas about for my fellow colleagues so i'm sure I have better mm -hmm. ideas than mine about affordable housing provision maybe them as an over as a housing provider maybe sure. any questions about the funding call and the process and i'm hearing a sense of urgency maybe you can maybe we can ask more about that and Andy, any other thoughts that folks might have please councillor Carreras. thank you very much um I, I mean i've heard about the organization i don't know a ton about it um so you said the the project that you have in maple ridge is, that you have already in in uh, the community how long has it been in the community um, we adopted it from uh, another housing provider in 2006, and I believe it late 80s. Yeah, it's a family housing community, 36 townhouses on Dudney Trunk Road. Okay, and it's just families that are there? Just families. And so there's an, an income uh, level they need to be in to access the housing? It's based yeah. on income? Yeah, okay. we follow the housing income limits that BC Housing provides. Okay, and then your other projects around the Lower Mainland, and I think you have quite a few around the Lower Mainland. Yeah, we do. We have 14 communities all together. And other than Prince George and Victoria right now, they're Metro Vancouver. Okay. And um, and they're predominantly just families and seniors, but you spoke a little bit about addiction recovery too. Did mm -hmm. I hear that in your presentation? Can you yep. just expand on what sort of your, your focus and priority is around the communities? Sure. So our first community in 1986 in Vancouver was for singles, families and seniors living together in community. It's our preferred model of housing. Uh, it looks like a typical neighborhood. That's, you know, you, you've got a, a good demographic, socioeconomic, generational diversity. Uh, and that was in 1984. Um, and so we moved from families into singles housing. A lot of times what we are bound by is whatever the provincial uh, or federal funding is available at the time. And so they'll have a program and they'll say, this is the focus. And if you want to put a proposal call forward, then we will consider it based on what we're going to provide funding for in that moment. Um, so right now, BC Housing is providing housing uh, or funding for um, communities that are exactly what we started with, which is singles, seniors, families, and folks with disabilities. And they just come together in community. We have one in Vancouver that we're working on with the city of Vancouver, um, their affordable housing agency, BC Housing and UBC Research. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the newest one. And again, it's single seniors and families. In terms of the addiction recovery, we have 60 units of open-ended long-term final stage uh, recovery for folks who are ready to move on in sobriety on their own. Uh, and they just need that final stage of support. And so they will come. And again, it's open-ended, which we really like. Uh, we don't want to put anybody in a place of vulnerability with their housing. We prefer that, that they make the decision to move versus it being forced upon them because they're in a short-term program. And then our mental health housing is for um, folks with complex uh, and severe mental health issues. We own some group homes in North Vancouver. We run seven all together, and then we do scattered site housing. We've been doing that since 1992. Great. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor Carreras. Councillor Schiller, please. I mean, I try again. Thank you. Um, uh, it's exciting to hear that uh, you think there might be sort of an, uh, an opportunity on the near horizon for, for Maple Ridge to do something. Could you, is there an example of um, a facility you're operating in another community um, where the city, um, talk to me about how the partnership works between the city uh, and the society in terms of, let's say there's an example where a city has some land um, and that's sort of what they're able to contribute. Can you just explain to me a little bit about how that works? Yeah, so it works really well when municipalities are willing to have um, city or municipal 
municipality owned land as their contribution. So oftentimes um, when government funding is available, whether that's provincial or federal, they are looking for more people to come and step up and, and come to the table. So that contribution of land takes away a very large expense and allows us to keep the rental affordable. So when a city is willing to provide the land, BC Housing comes in with the capital dollars required to build the project and then the operator comes in. Oftentimes um, there might be a small equity contribution from the nonprofit. Uh, and then we bring just our, our collaborative partnership. We as an organization are, um, we've built a great reputation. We say that humbly because it's through partnership, um, but we have a great reputation. We work really well with BC Housing. We have garnered a lot of support dollars over the years, whether it's through pre-development funding, um, uh, CHF funding, BC Housing funding, uh, and other groups that have that have brought that forward. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, thank you. Good point. So um, when we come into so the City of Vancouver project, it will be finished um, final quarter 2024. Um, it's a nominal lease for a period of time that typically is the same as the operating agreement that we would have with the funding partner. So it it is for the same term, it's a 60 year term. Um, in that instance, CMHC is actually coming in with some funding as well. And so it's it's a long-term land lease. The city retains ownership of that land, uh, which is often uh, very important as you know, there's a life cycle to the buildings and to the projects. Thank you, that's very helpful. Thank you, Councillor Schiller. Um, and I will put in my own questions as well. Um, in terms about the organization more than a roof, could you remind me, you might have said it, how many sites in Metro Vancouver and how many tenants do you have under your sort of jurisdiction? We have 14 communities. We consider North Vancouver, our mental health housing arm, a community. They're scattered sites. We serve about 130 to 140 individuals uh, in North Vancouver. And other than the two in Prince George and Victoria, the rest of them are men Metro Vancouver. Thank yeah. you. And remind, remind me how many tenants total across the... Over 2,000, probably about 2,400, 2,500. We just did a, a children count the other day, a kid count, because we do, um, we provide high school scholarships for our youth that graduate. And so we needed to kind of get a sense for budgeting purposes. And there was one community that had 98 children in a 43 unit townhouse community in Burnaby. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, thank you for that. Um, and you spoke about a call for funding and, yes. you know, we're around the table are quite excited about funding that doesn't come from our taxpayers. <laughs> and new to this process, could you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, it's called the Community Housing Fund. It's through BC Housing. This will be the third proposal call, I believe. They come approximately every two years. We're always hopeful that there's going to be another one, um, but there's a changing climate, escalating costs, et cetera. Um, and so we're not sure how much the funding will continue, but the word on the street is it's going to be late July, early August, that the proposal call will be sent out uh, with approximately a three month window for nonprofits and municipalities and formed partnerships to respond to get the capital funding for the projects. So it's a, it's a limited time opportunity and we don't know when the next one will be. And they are looking for what they deem to be shovel ready, which means that all of the geotech, all the environmental, uh, the arborist reports, all of the civil due diligence um, and assessment and conditions are met on the site so that literally, uh, if we can come to an agreement, the operating agreement gets signed, everybody's on board, we can put a shovel in the ground and start building uh, a building. So it, it's a very, yeah, it, it means that a project can be built within the next two years and new families and, and singles and seniors are being welcomed home. Thank you. That's useful. My last question is around this idea of partnerships. You know, as a as a city or as a council, um, as a nonprofit organ, organization, you've probably had some cities you've had very good partnerships with, are very fluid, very smooth. You know, you're able to get that provision of housing to folks as quickly as possible. Like, what does that look like? You know, how can we? What does it look like on our end in terms of being that good partner for nonprofit housing providers? I'm breathing. <laughs> Uh, Leanne and I have uh, worked together a few times. She says she's hearing me breathe, so she knows I want to speak. Uh, but uh, uh, some of the things that uh, we would look for is uh, at the CHF call uh, that there is some uh, agreement with us and the city to move forward with a proposal. Uh, if if there isn't a solid um, 
uh, confirmation that uh, this is a doable project, they won't consider us. So an LOI uh, letter of intent um, at the early stages of the CHF proposal call would be required. Uh, from then, um, there would be likely a housing agreement that would be established between um, the city of uh, Maple Ridge and the operator, which in this case uh, would be uh, more than a roof housing. So uh, uh, there would be a housing agreement uh, that would be established and then a legal agreement that would uh, cover off, uh, say, a 60-year lease or something like that. And, and the city would retain ownership and we would be the, uh, the nominal lease payer um, and we would operate it for the period of time that was agreed. So those are kind of the three uh, items if, um, and I'm not sure whether, I believe this property is actually rezoned already for the appropriate use. Can't remember, uh, but uh, um, in any case, it would all obviously have to also have the appropriate zoning and to meet all of the requirements of the city for, for the development. Thank you for that. And I'm looking around the floor and on Zoom for other questions and second round. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for coming out of Maple Ridge. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you. you as well. All right. Um, Madam Chair or Madam Clerk, what is the next item on the agenda? Uh, the next item on this morning's agenda is item 5.1, application 2023-161-RZ for 12336 Lady Street. Welcome, Mr. McMillan. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Council. Uh, this application here, which is not advancing, another remote. No, neither remote works. Uh, the, the above noted application is being considered for first reading for 12336 Lady Street. The area is designated urban residential now and is proposed to be rezoned from RS1 single detached residential to R1 single detached low density urban residential. The site is approximately uh, 0.27 acres and it's for a two lot subdivision. This is the subject property here located on Lady Street, just north of 123rd Avenue. This is a uh, OCP context map showing the urban residential designation all around, including the lot. This is the ortho photo showing the subject lot and the existing built environment. As noted, the application is to rezone this application of this lot from R1 single detached low to sorry, single detached low density urban residential to prevent a two lot subdivision. The designation of urban resident supports this rezoning to R1. The lot size dimensions for the proposed lots are both approximately 500 square meters, which is in excess of the 371 square meter lot size specified in that zone. And if the application were successful, it would be uh, paying $7,100 for a community many contribution. And this is a proposed subdivision layout, just showing the two lots facing Lady Street um, and the existing house, which would be removed, uh, Madam Chair and Council. Thank you for that, Mr. McMullen. Um... Are there any questions from members of council? Uh, Councillor Dewitt, please. Sorry, I was just moving it forward. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Pardon me. Let me figure out my script. What do I say next, Madam Clerk? Move a motion. Thank you, Mayor Rumi. Um, calling, what do we need? We need a motion to move this forward to the next council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dewitt, and seconded by Councillor Yusuf. Um, and now questions? Yes, thank you. Uh, opening the floor to questions, Councillor Carreras. Sorry, just a super quick question. I apologize because I could have gone on the open government site, but it just occurred to me now. What is happening with the applicant? Just north, right north. The one that's just north on the corner of Lady Street and 123B. It's a looks like there's a bigger one. I'm just curious if you know off the top of your head what that rezone is uh yes that application is a lot line readjustment subdivision to change a lot line on two lots but it's not to create any additional laws at this time okay just curious thank you thank you councillor Carras. and looking around the floor um i see no further questions which means we call for sorry 
call the vote. Thank you. So I'm not calling the vote about whether we moved or moving this to the next council meeting. All those in favor? Uh, thank you. It's unanimous that the item is carried. Uh, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the next item on the agenda is item 5.2, application 2023-184-RZ for 213-08-123 Avenue. Thank you. Please. I think you need some help advancing again. As the uh, previously noted uh, application is for two. 1308 123rd Avenue. It's also being considered for first reading at this time. The area is designated urban residential and is also proposed to be rezoned to from RS1 single detached residential to R1 single detached low density residential, urban residential uh, for a 0.27 acre lot to permit a two lot subdivision, very similar to the previous in some ways. Uh, the lot is on 123rd Avenue as shown here on the subject map. This is the urban residential uh, designation surrounding the area, including the lot. And this is the lot on the uh, orthophoto showing the existing built context of the area. As noted, this application to rezone the property to R1 single detached low density residential to permit a future two lot subdivision. Um, the two lots meet the minimum uh, requirement for the lot size, which is 371 square meters, or quite a bit larger, 484 square meters and 491 square meters. However, there would be a minor variance needed to reduce the lot width from 12 meters to approximately 11.5 meters for each lot if the application were to proceed. The application would be subject to this community many contribution of $7,100 if it were to proceed to adoption. And this is the lot layout here showing the two buildings or houses facing north to 123rd. Uh, Madam Chair and Committee. Thank you, Mr. McMullen. And I'm calling for a motion. Okay, calling for a motion for to move this in next council meeting, moved by Council Carreras and seconded by Mayor Rumi. Uh, any questions from the floor? Uh, calling once, calling twice. Okay, seeing no questions, I will call the vote. All those in favor of moving this in next council meeting, and it is unanimous. Thank you, Council. Madam Clerk. The next item on the agenda is item 5.3, which is 2023-199-RZ for 21378 River Road. Thank you. Please. Thank you. So this application, at, it's fine. <laughs> the previously noted application at uh, 213878 River Road is for consideration of first reading. The area is designated urban residential. It's currently zoned RS1 single detached residential and the proposal is for an RT2 ground oriented residential infill project for a triplex. The lot is approximately a quarter of an acre. This is a subject property located on uh, River Road, uh, in urban residential area. It's also a major corridor River Road. This is the urban uh, residential designation on this lot and surrounding lots. This is the lot um, just on the orthophoto showing the built context. Just noting that to the south is the Fraser River Escarpment. There's a note in the report that the Fraser River Escarpment is still under steady, as with any application in this area that has to be concluded before um, consideration of building permits in the future. Um, the rezoning is to RT2 ground oriented residential infill to permit the future construction of duplex triplex as noted. Uh, that would be under the RT2 zoning, which is supported for uh, this designation on a major corridor. And the proposal is for uh, four bedroom, uh, three and a half bath units. Each of them is that size, three, four bedroom, three and a half bath units, quite large units and each has a double garage uh, for each uh, unit. There's also two off-street parking spaces provided, which is not required in the parking bylaw, but it's being provided given there's not street parking on River Road. Uh, the application will be subject to community many contribution rate of $5,700 a unit or 11,400 if the application were to proceed to adoption. And this is the uh, proposal just showing River Road to the north and the driveway coming in to the three garages and then the first floor layout plan. 
and the recommendations before you to proceed to give this uh, first reading at the next council meeting, Madam Chair and committee. Thank you. Now calling for a, a motion to advance this to the next council meeting and moved by Councillor Yusuf and second by Councillor Schiller. Thank you. Um, any questions from the floor? Councillor Schiller. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question is just around um, active infrastructure um, planned for the for the overall area. Um, is it, do we have any uh, cycling infrastructure along River Road or sort of parallel to it? It's a is a designated cycle route, I believe, and the manager of transportation can speak to this further. Hi. Yes, uh, thank you to the chair. Um, I don't think your microphone is on. There we go. Thank you to the chair. Uh, River Road is, is a pedestrian connection. There is a bus stop located in front of this um, development. So we'll be looking at that after we pass first reading to see what amenities we can provide. We also did a pedestrian crossing assessment at Pine Street, which is just located about 120 meters away um, in 2015. It wasn't warranted at that time, but if this moves forward, we'll have a further assessment to see if we can improve access to the bus stop. As for active transportation, it is uh, identified for a pedestrian infrastructure in the longer term. Um, there is a little bit of a pedestrian connection here just because of the location of the bus stop. So we'll be looking at that further detail. Um, that's pretty much it on the active side. Thank you, I appreciate that information. Uh, that's all my questions for now. Thanks, Councillor Schiller. Looking around the floor, going once, going twice. Okay, and now I'd like to call for a vote, please. I'm moving this to the next council meeting uh, and that carries unanimously, thank you. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item on the agenda is item 5.4. Application 2021-055-RZ 425443, Bosomworth Avenue. Thank you. Uh, the above note application uh, to 25443 Bosomworth Avenue is being considered for second reading at this meeting. It's designated suburban, suburban residential on this property. The lot is currently zoned RS3 single detached rural residential, and the proposed zoning is RS2 single detached suburban residential. And the lot is three acres, and two lots are proposed. This is a subject property on the cadastral map. This is a subject property showing the suburban residential designation on the property and the agricultural land reserved to the north. This is the uh, subject property on the ortho photo showing um, suburban development to the south and the agricultural more undeveloped land to the north and some newer development to the east. Uh, the application is noted to rezone the subject property to RS2 single detached suburban residential to permit two lots. Uh, and with the existing uh, residents remaining, the OCP designation suburban residential supports this rezoning. The minimum lot area for the RS2 zone is uh, 0.4 hectares or one acre. Both lots are approximately an acre and a half. Each lot will uh, is required to have a minimum of two parking spaces on site, which is quite a bit of room on that site for that. Um, and also I should just note that the application is required to provide a 15 meter wide agricultural uh, land reserve buffer covenant. It's not known on the slide, but it's uh, in the report along the north edge of the property next to the ALR. And if the application were successful to proceed to adoption, $7,100 a CAC would be applicable at adoption. And this is the subject uh, map just showing it's rotated, but that's the property with uh, the road to the south, Bosworth Avenue to the south and the ALR to the right, which is actually the north. And the conditions in the uh, report are rezoning of a rezoning servicing agreement as standard for such applications, road dedication to widen Bosworth Avenue is required, restrictive covenant uh, for the agricultural land reserve buffer for 15 meters along the north property line, uh, similar to the uh, recent subdivisions to the east have that same covenant. A uh, covenant regarding the wildfire protection development permit is required for the site. It's in the wildfire area of the city and a registration of Fraser Health covenant for the septic field and um, to 
preserve the septic field areas, ensure that the septic field is of these satisfactory um, technical specifications. And then the standard requirement that the site does not have any um, unknown or now unknown fuel storage tanks. And if there are, they'll have to be further assessment by a professional engineer and that the $7,100 CAC contribution be provided as noted previously, Madam Chair and Committee. Thank you. Could I please have a motion to move this item to the next council meeting? Uh, moved by Councillor Dewick and seconded by Councillor Yusuf. Thank you. Any questions from the floor? Councillor Schiller. I'm on a roll today. Um, under the, the current OCP, um, is this the furthest that this lot could be subdivided or could it be further subdivided in the future? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, through Councillor Schiller, this is the furthest that can be subdivided with that designation and servicing. Yes. Thank you. And so I understand that as part of the development, there'll be septic um, services put in for these, these two homes. Yes. Um, and that'll be part of the development process. And then um, does that sewer then become, um, ultimately becomes maintained by the city? like at some point in the future uh, or is no. that privately the private maintained? septic field so the through the rezoning and subdivision process the applicant does soils testing and has registration with Fraser Health to confirm that there are suitable septic field and reserve field areas in case they should fail that's the standard practice of primary and reserve area and then covenants are put on title to ensure those areas are not built upon in the future and those are then maintained by the homeowners in the future right okay thank you very much and a question of mine, uh, for a subdivision like this one, are frontage improvements required? So street lights? On this road, I'm not, I will defer to the manager of transportation given that it's a little bit borderline between rural and urban and suburban. Yes, the chair just catching up on the file. This would be designated as rural, I believe. So I think it is fairly minimal under our current conditions. Thank you for that. Appreciate their last call for questions. Seeing no more questions around the table or on Zoom, I'm now calling for a vote, please, on this item. Uh, those in favor of moving it to the next council meeting. And that has carried unanimously. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item on the agenda is item 5.5. For application 2023-188-RZ for 21695 River Road. Thank you. Hello, Ms. Cowan. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. The uh, report in front of you and bylaw in front of you today is for a heritage tax exemption for a property that's uh, designated uh, as heritage and is protected by bylaw. So a bit about the property itself. The property located at 21695 River Road was designated as a heritage property back in April, 1997. So if you do the math quickly, it's been about 26 years. Uh, the property owners have applied for a heritage tax exemption. It is the same property owners who applied for uh, the heritage protection back in 1997. Uh, and so for 26 years since the designation, the property owners have been uh, taking impeccable care of the property. Staff got the chance to go out and visit the site uh, and it looks great. Um, so it's here before you because uh, the property has not received a heritage tax exemption to date. And it's typical in recent tradition that when a heritage designation comes forward, uh, either through a bylaw or a heritage revitalization agreement, a tax exemption is part of it. And so uh, that's why it's here today. The property owners have requested it uh, to keep up with rising costs um, on a fixed income. So just a quick overview in terms of legislation and our policies. The community charter enables municipal council by bylaw to provide a tax exemption for um, for the municipal portion of property taxes. So any other levies, uh, it doesn't apply, it's just the municipal portion. Uh, the bylaw must identify how many years the tax exemption is for. The legislation doesn't actually give a maximum that's required, it can be unlimited, but the bylaw has to state when it begins and when it ends. Um, and that the heritage tax exemption bylaw must be adopted by at least two thirds of council through vote. And in terms of our policies, we have several policies regarding heritage conservation in terms of management, education, and recognition, but two policies kind of up here on the screen, uh, you know, really speak to uh, conserving 
uh, encouraging conservation and designation of properties across Maple Ridge and to use provincial tools to strengthen conservation across the city. And I'll just note the uh, Community Heritage Commission uh, reviewed this application back in June 8th um, as per our heritage procedures bylaw um, and supported the application. In terms of the summary of heritage to significance, the statement of significance, uh, which is part of the application or part of uh, the report in front of you, uh, was endorsed by council back in 1998, then again in 2004, and then again in 2008. So every time the heritage register has been updated, the statement of significance of the value of this property has been reaffirmed by council. Uh, and the statement of significance really speaks to that it's a really good example of a craftsman style uh, bungalow within Maple Ridge, and that it's a really valuable record of the urban and social development of the neighborhood, specifically that transition from rural uh, to residential growth, especially during the post First World War era. And so the tax exemption bylaw uh, before you is proposed for 10 years. Uh, and the bylaw also has a section that states that if a condition set out in the bylaw is not met, or if a demolition application is not uh, is approved by council, the city can request the full amount of tax exemptions uh, to be received in return. Uh, this is pretty typical for heritage tax exemptions and heritage revitalization agreements. Um, it's just there in order to encourage the city and property owners to work together uh, in order to achieve what's on the site without full demolition. In terms of next steps, uh, should the council move this forward, it would go through uh, first and second reading. It would have to go to public hearing because it's uh, a heritage tax exemption and then for third and final. And should council move this forward, the recommendations on the screen and I will note the property owners are also here to answer any questions today. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. And could we please have a motion to move this item to the next council meeting? Moved by Mayor Rumi, seconded by Councillor Carreras. Uh, thank you for that. And now open the floor to questions. Um, I've got a question of my own. Um, I'm curious about the, um, the maintenance costs of a heritage property. Are these typically more than a regular, than a typical property? That is not designated in heritage. Through the chair, the bylaw itself outlines what needs to be conserved. Um, so it does specify um, certain materials, look, design. So it definitely can be more expensive uh, than maintenance of a regular home. So the typical example that's used is, you know, instead of um, you know requiring wood siding or some hardy board or vinyl, which is kind of the more affordable option, uh, isn't really in keeping with the heritage value and character. Thank you for that. I'm looking around the floor for any more questions. Seeing no more questions, let's call the vote, please. Uh, all those in favor of moving this to the next council meeting and that passes unanimously. Thank you for that. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item on the agenda is item 5.6, application 2023-189-RZ for 23575 124th Avenue. Thank you. Please. So the application that's before you is following more of our typical process. Um, a heritage designation application has been received, um, you know, by the property owner, and at the same time, uh, going with a tax exemption for the property at two three five seven five one twenty fourth Avenue. So a bit of background about the property. Uh, it's actually an active farm uh, located in the agricultural land reserve. It's just outside of the urban area boundary. The property has been identified on the heritage register. So as the property owner had a statement of significance done uh, back in 2019 and council uh, endorsed it with the update to the heritage register back in January, 2019. The property owner has applied to designate the property as a protected heritage property, which is um, kind of more important to note for this slide in terms of legislative framework. Um, the Local Government Act does not require consent of the property owner to designate a property. However, in this application, the property owner has requested it. Um, 
And then the obviously council has the ability to designate a property uh, in order to protect it from demolition and unsympathetic uh, alterations. These uh, demolition and unsympathetic alterations are done through um, a property owner have to apply through a heritage alteration permit. And that permit process is outlined in our heritage procedures bylaw. And it's really just an opportunity to manage change, not to freeze a property in time forever, uh, to really a chance to work with the property owner and the city to figure out what is desired for the property and how to retain that heritage value. So counter to typical belief, it's not to freeze it exactly in time forever. And again, the section here is just about the community charter in terms of the heritage tax exemption. It's just the municipal portion of heritage property or the municipal portion of the property taxes um, that would be waived. Uh, the bylaw has to specify a certain number of years, so it's 10 years in this case, and it has to be adopted by two thirds of council. In terms of OCP policies and guiding documents, again, our OCP has uh, policies that encourage the conservation and designation of properties in Maple Ridge and to use tools in order to strengthen that heritage conservation across the city. The other tool that's used, especially for heritage designation, heritage designated properties that are protected by bylaw is the standards and guidelines for the conservation of historic places to Canada. And council adopted these back in 2009. And it's really a guiding document uh, to show staff how uh, places should be conserved. So when an application is made uh, to make changes, we look to this document, we look at the changes being proposed and find a path forward with the uh, property owner. In terms of a summary of the statement of significance, uh, the statement of significance is uh, basically what was adopted by council back in 2019. Uh, it states that the property is uh, significantly associated with the early agricultural development of Maple Ridge, and this includes the history of Japanese settlement in the area. It includes the formation uh, and foundation of the Maple Ridge Music Society. It has a significant wetland and wildlife habitat on the property. Coho Creek uh, runs through it, and the main house is a good example of the mid-century modern architecture in Maple Ridge. So all around, it is a cultural landscape. So in terms of the heritage designation and tax exemption bylaw before you, uh, it protects the property from demolition and unsympathetic alterations. The, as I mentioned, this is done through the heritage alteration permit process. Um, and the bylaw require, talks about when a heritage alteration permit is required and is not required. So if the property owner is just seeking to do repairs, um, a heritage alteration permit is not required. Um, and as mentioned, uh, Designating the property does not freeze it exactly in time, but manages change of uh, the property over time. The uh, tax exemption is for the municipal portion of property taxes for 10 years. And as typical in these tax exemption bylaws and heritage designations um, has a section that states that if a condition set out in the bylaw is not met or if a demolition application is approved by council, the city can, re can request the full amount of tax exemptions um, that's been received. And that again, is just to encourage um, everyone to work together to find a way forward. Similar to the previous application, it will go through the same uh, uh, bylaw adoption process that includes public hearing because it is a heritage designation as well as a tax exemption. Both of those require a public hearing and then it would go to third and final. The recommendation should council move it forward is here on the screen and I will note the property owner is also here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gowen. I'm looking for a motion to move this item to the next council meeting, moved by Mayor Rumi and seconded by Councillor DeWick. Thank you for that. Um, and opening the floor to questions. And just gonna call for a second time on Zoom or around the table for any questions. Seeing no questions, I will call for a vote, please. Um, those in favor of moving this item to the next council meeting. And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item 5.7 for 2023-188-RZ, an application for 21695 River Road. Thank you. Welcome back, Mr. McMillan. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just wait a moment here. Um, subject application 21783 for Low Heat Highway is for a development permit. 
in the area that's designated commercial and the existing OCP. The current zoning is C2 community commercial and the proposed zoning is C7 low heat transit corridor mixed use. Uh, the site area is approximately uh, 52,248 square feet or about one and a quarter acres. And the purpose is to build a six story mixed use building with 121 rental units and uh, 660 square meters or about 7,000 square feet of commercial on the ground floor. This is the subject property located on the subject map, showing it on the north side of Lougheed Highway. This is the uh, site in the built context being a large vacant lot, with a commercial building to the west and residential to the east and to the north. This is the current OCP designation. It shows it as commercial and then urban residential to the north and to the uh, east and southeast. Just to note, this application um, is going for, forward for consideration of adoption of zoning next week also. And council provided uh, first, second, and third readings for the housing agreement to secure rental only units in this building or perpetuity. That was at the last meeting last week with council. So again, this application is a six story building with 121 rental units um, and 7,000 square feet of commercial space proposed. The development application is associated with rezoning, which I just mentioned, the C7 zone. C7 zone is a new zone that was created and is at third reading uh, for the low heat corridor, transit corridor area. There are several other applications uh, utilizing this zone and that zone would be brought forward next week for consideration of adoption, that C7 zone, along with a specific application that uses it. Uh, the unit mix in the proposal is uh, six studio, 88 one bedroom and 27 two bedroom units for the 121 unit total. The main pedestrian entrance to the building is off low heat highway and the vehicle access is basically through a driveway that's on the west side of the site, leaving low heat highway and then curving around to the north um, east corner of the building. And there's a surface parking lot at the back with 47 <laughs> parking spaces for the commercial units and the visitor parking and then 121 uh, residential parking spaces in the underground parking garage below the building. And the building meets all the requirements of the parking and loading bylaw. And this application is currently supported under the official community plan commercial designation that exists now and the proposed uh, low heat corridor transit designation also that's in the draft plan that's halfway through the process. This is the site plan showing low heat highway and the entrance uh, on the west side, curving around to the surface lot, again with the uh, commercial and visitor spots on the surface lot, going to the underground arcade ramp in the northeast corner of the building. And this is a building in the south, ele south elevation facing low heat highway. And this is the west elevation. If you were driving in from that driveway on the west side, you're looking into the main part of the building with six stories facing low heat highway. And then it drops down to four stories in the wing that goes closer to the rear of the parcel. And this is a rendering of the building looking from the southwest towards uh, the building just on the other side of low heat highway. And the recommendation is that corporate officer be authorized to sign and seal the development permit uh, 2021-061-DP respecting the subject property at 2173 Low Heat Highway, I'm Madam Chair and Committee. Thank you. Um, looking for a motion, please, to move this item to the next council meeting, moved by Councillor Yusuf and seconded by Councillor Schiller. And now opening the floor to questions, Councillor Yusuf, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to staff for the presentation. If I may, through the chair to staff, I'd like clarity on the uh, last sentence in the last paragraph on the front page of the application stipulating that any building permit and development permit applied for in the future will be subject to the policies, bylaws, and development permit requirements in place at the time of application. So through the chair to staff, I'm wondering specifically about the building permit portion of it, as well as the uh, development permit as well, uh, but would then the policies that are referred to here be what's in place today or when the application was initially received? And if I'm not mistaken, that would be 2021? Um, Madam Chair, through Councillor Yusuf, this policy statement was developed with our engineering department and uh, is a general statement that we have in our report. So any building permit, which we don't have in yet on this application, it would be subject to 
the current uh, policies of the city at the time of that building permit application. So if it were tomorrow or next week after potential zoning adoption, then the current policies we have now would be in place. In the future, um, the, fray, the Fraser River Escarpment is still undergoing some study, the engineering department, and if the policies were to change at that time, say, just give an example of a year from now, those new policies would apply for to the building permit. That's what that statement is. And we've gone over that with the engineering department and our solicitor. Yes. Thank you for that clarification. And to follow up, Madam Chair, through you to staff. Um, so if the development permit proceeds, as I understand currently, we're not issuing building permits in the Fraser Scarpman area. Will that be a reason to hold up this application or will it not allow it to then uh, have the building permit issued until the Fraser Escarpment uh, review is done. And this is this, this wording was carefully considered with our engineering and engineering consultants. It's a slight change from earlier on in the year where there was a discussion about holding off building permits mm -hmm. in February. But this is now that end of the current bylaws that exist now, you would be able to proceed and get your building permit issued. So it's a little bit of a change from, I'd say, back in February. Thank you for those clarifications. Thank you, Madam Chair. Those are my questions. Thank you, Councillor Yusuf. Uh, Councillor Carreras, please. Thank you. Um, just a quick question around, and, and I apologize if these are questions that you went through, but because this is mostly discussed at an earlier council than this one, I'm just curious about what type of commercial is going in here. And when I look at the renderings, it's really hard to, to actually see the commercial space. Um, right. Um, and chairs who counts or Carreras. So approximately 7,000 square feet is uh, commercial space mm -hmm. in the ground floor and two, uh, five or six commercial units. The leases would be able to pick any of the commercial uses in the C7 zone to place in that building. So it's quite okay. long range. Um, I could just I have the C7 zone here just to very quickly range it from everything. Sorry, I know I've asked yeah. what's in there before. Oh, We've gone through C7 before, but if you could oh, just, I'm sorry, oh, if you could refresh my memory, that would be great. It's quite a broadly a broad purpose commercial zone that allows everything from business services, convenience store, I'm just summarizing as a long list, can, uh, financial services, indoor commercial recreation, licensee liquor retail store, personal repair services, place of worship, private hospital. Not that you would have one probably in that, but it's a quite a broad base zone that's intended for that quarter so restaurant, retail. Yeah. Um, and then I do have a quick question. Um, will it allow uh, for restaurants to go in there? Because I understand if it needs to be built a specific way if if you allow restaurants. That, that is one of the potential uses that's allowed in that zone, which is, a, as I mentioned, broad purpose zone. So if the, a restaurant tenant were to proceed to go in there, we would have to go through the building permit process and provide for the necessary fire accommodations and ventilation. So, Okay. Yeah. So those pieces you're still working through with the builder then if... That would be submitted with either the main building permit um, okay. with the application or sometimes a tenant improvement permit later if a tenant comes along and wants to put a, a re restaurant or different use in there. Okay. That's just my understanding. And I could be totally wrong because I'm just hearing this out in the community. Um, and that's sometimes not always the most correct information oh. is that during the building process that there needs to be specific venting put into a building when you build it, if, it, if there's a potential of restaurants going in there. Uh, that... Yes, Madam Chair, through the committee, there's venting that's required by the building department and sometimes by the fire department. And so this is designed as sort of a general purpose retail space, not specifically as a restaurant space. Okay, so, so it's not be being changes. designed to accommodate, not that I'm saying- It'd have to be modified. Just wanted to make sure that that wouldn't be in there. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Carreras. And looking around the floor and on Zoom for any further questions. Uh, seeing none, I'll call for a vote, please. All those in favor of moving this item to the next council meeting. And that is unanimous. Thank you. Madam Clerk. The next item on the agenda is item 5.8. It's application 2018-180 for DP and DVP for 220-57 and 220-83 Low Heat Highway. Thank you. Please, Mr. Goddard. Thank you, Council. 
after our presentation. It's a building just to the east of the last one we saw, similar form, a, a residential building, no commercial in this one. Um, it is just strictly a residential building. That's from a dating from 2018. Uh, it is six stories like the previous one. It has a development permit and the development variance permit. The zoning was approved last council meeting. It is from single family, collection of six lots, I believe, going to RM2 this case, strictly single, strictly residential. It's six stories in form with a five story component to the north to help buffer the scale to the single family homes to the north. There's the property on Low Heat Highway, just west of the Baptist Church there. We have applications to the south on Low Heat as well as to the east of the property as well on the south side of Low Heat and likely to have them on those vacant lands to the west. It is in the Lowheed Corridor study, so it does help permit this sort of density. Again, there's a significant uh, dedication being taken along Lowheed Highway to accommodate future uh, transportation options on Lowheed, which will be consistent with other applications. Again, it's 106 units in total. There are two levels of underground parking proposed here. The application was from 2018. It received final adoption. Um, well, sorry, we'll receive final option shortly. The proposed housing mix is quite healthy. You can see there's about 27 units there that are three bedrooms, which is good. So this will be a, a family oriented building, I would say, only five studios involved. This is really the first building that will be shown on our, that's this important entrance to our town center. Okay, we have uh, pedestrian accesses off on 121st Street. We have your access, of course, is from the rear lane. There is the rough in for the chargers, um, which will provide um, underground parking in the underground parking area. They're requesting a reduction of parking from 181 to 162, but they're paying for that and parking in lieu. This building is actually using the higher parking ratio of 1.7. Uh, we are considering lowering that in our parking studies you'll see in the fall to a lower rate, the town center rate in the Lowheed corridor area, because it's healthily served by transit, of course, and is on our main uh, corridor east and west. We have a number of variances required. They are really to main building face. Um, we are tight on 121st, given the um, nature of the dedications there, as well as the significant dedications of about three and a half meters on Lowheed, um, as well as we wanted to pull the building to the south and to the west to kind of give more buffering for the single family homes to the north across the lane, as well as the significant take being occurring on Lowheed Highway from the ministry. We also have variances to the south uh, on the highway and to all essentially the property lines. We have um, a roof increase in height slightly to accommodate the six story form from what is uh, typically provided there under the zoning on the RM2 zone on Lowheed corridor. So there'll be six stories as everything will eventually be or more on Lowheed. So these are supportable. You can see the uh, quick site plan of the property. It's again pulled to the south and to the west to try and move the building to reinforce the low heat corridor scale as opposed to negatively impacting the single family homes to the north. There's the four story form with a capped roof. Six stories, there is no commercial of course. The grade is relatively flat so there won't be a lot of retaining walls. That's the appearance of the building from the southwest corner. Entryway is on there on the Primo sign there. So we're recommending it move forward. There are variances, those will move forward as well. Uh, we have a kind of contribution of $152,000 for those parking and loose stations. And there we go. I think that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Goddard. I'm looking for a motion to move this item to the next council meeting, moved by Councillor Dewick, seconded by Councillor Dozier, and opening the floor to questions, please. Um, first call for questions, second call. All right, seeing no further questions, um, can I call for a vote, please? All those in favor of moving this item to the next council meeting, and that carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. The next item on the agenda is item 5.9. It's application 2019-427, VP slash DP for 20690 Low Heat Highway. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. This is an item for 20690 Lloyd Highway. Um, it's a development variance permit and a commercial development permit.
clicker doesn't seem to be working. Um, so the existing and proposed OCP designation is commercial. Uh, the existing zoning is C2, community commercial, and RS1, single detached residential. The proposed zoning is C2, community commercial. The existing lot area and proposed lot area is so around approximately 7,000 meters squared. Uh, the proposed units is up to four additional retail units and up to three additional office units on the subject property. Next. Uh, the subject property is outlined in red on the map um, and the portion hatched out is the area being rezoned to C2. Next. The neighborhood plan context um, shown above shows the surrounding area. To the north, there's retail. To the west, there's highway commercial. Uh, to the south, there's a townhouse development as well as a single detached residence. Uh, residence. And to the east, there's uh, uh, some convenience stores and single detached residential. Next. So the development proposal is to rezone the western part of the subject property from RS1 single detached residential to C2 community commercial and construct a two-story commercial building with retail use on the ground floor and office use on the second floor. Uh, so approximately 600 meters squared of retail space and around approximately 250 meters squared of office space. The applicant has consolidated two lots and made a road dedication along Lloyd Highway. There's an existing commercial building on the eastern part of the subject property, and the form and character of the proposed building matches that of the existing building. Commercial development permit guidelines have been met. The existing vehicular accesses to surface parking would be maintained from Lloyd Highway and 207th Street. Required and proposed off-street parking spaces, long-term bicycle parking spaces, and short-term bicycle parking spaces are shown on the table in the next slide. Um, so they have 114 proposed off-street parking spaces and the requirement is only 113. Um, in terms of the small car percentage of that, uh, the maximum is 10% of the required amount. Uh, they're going slightly above. The long-term bicycle parking spaces proposed is two spaces and the short-term bicycle parking spaces proposed is four spaces. Next slide. The proposed variances involve a variance to the zoning bylaw to vary the minimum rear lot line setback for the proposed building from six meters to 2.69 meters, a variance to the off-street parking and loading bylaw to vary the maximum percentage of small car spaces in the off-street parking area from 10% to 10.62%. Next slide. Um, additional variances to the Maple Ridge sign bylaw to vary the minimum rear lot line setback for a freestanding sign near the northwest corner of the subject property from 1.5 meters to one meter. Uh, another variance to vary the minimum exterior side lot line setback for a freestanding sign near the northwest corner of the subject property from 1.5 meters to 0 0.3 meters. Um, additional variance to vary the minimum exterior side lot line setback for a freestanding sign near the access from Lloyd Highway to the subject property from 1.5 meters to 0 0.46 meters, and an additional variance to vary the minimum site access or exit point setback for a freestanding sign near the access from Lloyd Highway from 1.5 meters to 1.07 meters. Next slide. It's noted that the province's Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure requires a 4.5 meter setback from their right of way for Lloyd Highway. Prior to construction, the applicant is responsible for obtaining a highway use permit or setback permit from Modi to reduce the required setback. Next slide. The proposed site plan is shown on the screen. Um, this proposed commercial building is on the left hand side. Next slide. The proposed building elevations are shown and it's coming in at just under 10 meters um, allowed for the C2 zone. These are the proposed perspectives. Next slide. Um, the report recommendations is that the corporate officer be authorized to sign and seal uh, 2019-427-VP and 2019-427-DP in relation to the subject property. Thank you, Mr. Rajasurier. Um, opening, no, 
motion. Um, could I please have a motion to move this item to next council meeting? Thank you, Councillor Yusuf, and seconded by Councillor Schiller. Um, opening the floor to questions, please. Um, seeing no questions on the floor, um, I have two questions here. Um, understanding this application is sort of in the later stage of the process, I'm just curious, so, so for now, just to understand the context, was there any conversation to, with the developer and, or any interest they had shown in providing residential at this site as well? I don't think there has been um, interest by the developer to involve residential at this specific site. Thank you. Um, the second question I have was around bike parking. Um, understanding that there's not a requirement in our uh, in our bylaws to provide that, I'm just curious if there's had been further question um, discussions with the developer about it. Given that our given that many members of council have expressed a desire to see more active transportation options. At this time, um, the bicycle short term, long term requirements are only applicable within the town center area. Um, and so there's limited um, sort of uh, leverage there in terms of what we can require from the developer. Um, but they've indicated that uh, four short-term uh, spaces and two long-term spaces are sufficient. Thank you. Always looking for that interest from folks who are partnering in our community. Um, and just looking around the floor the last time and on Zoom, I am seeing no further questions. Um, could I call for a vote, please? All those in favor of sending this item to the next council meeting and that passes unanimously. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item 5.10. For application 2023-173-VP for 20426 Hampton Street. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Goddard. Hi. Hey. Very happy developer. He's been waiting many years for that project to conclude. So that's good. All right, this is a quick development variance permit in Hammond at 20426 Hampton Street. The development variance permit is to essentially create a building height that will allow a secondary suite above the floodplain. Thus, the building needs to move higher up. The applicants are here. There we are. It's low densities, multifamily in this area, single family RS1, large lots down in Hammond, lower Hammond, uh, large lots. We have a single family home that wants to be built with a secondary suite, but it needs to have a suite. It needs to be above that flood construction level. And we all know it's low down in that area. So the building height has to increase. There's the lot. There's a number of lots being built out in this area over time. We may see more requests in the future for this. You can see the undeveloped lots on that um, overhead view there. The building height has to go up to construct the single family home. It would go essentially the old zoning bylaw allowed a taller home in this area. The new boiling zoning bylaw pushed it down to eight meters. So the applicant would like a secondary suite and we are in agreement with that here. We're proposing that the building increases in height to get above that minimum floodplain elevation. The building department has reviewed the geotechnical work and is supportive of that option. There will be a crawl space built on this home to allow the elevation to rise and then we'll limit the height of that crawl space, of course. So the proposal is to allow this RS1 home to go from eight meters to 9.5 meters. Again, that's measured at the midpoint of the roof and uh, that will allow the secondary suite to be constructed. This is the preliminary plan of the house plan on Hampton Street. These are the elevations. So the building is slightly higher than you would expect a two-story home in that area because of the crawl space being built, but it's still a relatively low pitched home to try and keep the form and impact less. We'll likely see three or four or five other homes built to this sort of scale in this portion of this street. So, so we're recommending it move forward. It's a housing option that we're in favor of. It's under variance permit there and we'll go, You'll see it again at council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goddard. Looking for a motion, please, to move this item to next council meeting. Moved by Councillor Doze and seconded by Councillor Yusuf. Thank you. Um, and opening the fourth questions, Councillor Carreras, followed by Councillor Yusuf, followed by Councillor Schiller, please. Thank you. Um, okay, so I have a couple of questions 
because of course this is around the variance of the height and the reason we're going up is because they want to put in a third level Correct. is that so they can well they it won't be a third level buildable but they have to raise it up to get the secondary suite out of the floodplain elevation mm -hmm. so they'll be on a crawl space is my understanding so so it'll be Correct. sort of like two and a half Correct. above ground Correct. and so the the suite will be sort of half Second, and half yeah okay it'll be four feet in the air all right. And um, is this the first time we are shifting to that view as someone who used to live on the floodplain where no one could ever have basements or basement suites? Is this a is this the first time that, that is we're... the request? This is the first one I can recall in Hammond. There may be a few others that have been built, but this is a new request. And we'll likely see the six undeveloped lots around it want to raise the elevation to accommodate a two story okay. home. And how does that because there's the Hammond area plan. Yep which had extensive consultation not that long ago. And does the Hammond area plan sort of, I know there was a real focus right, on maintaining right. the heritage right. of the Hammond area. And how does this sort of align with the, I'm so struggling between the housing plan and the Hammond right. plan here. Yes. Um, how, how does this increasing this height how does that align with the Hammond area plan? This isn't exactly within the heritage area. It's in the lower Hammond area. So it doesn't have those same characteristics of the heritage you'd see around the park in central Hammond. Um, but these homes are typically um, two stories in height. So this home will be a, at least a half story higher than the existing older homes in the neighborhood. Many of those homes could transition over time, um, but they are in the floodplain and you cannot have a suite. You can only have a two story home. So the applicant is looking for that extra housing option. Okay. And then and the neighborhood will, will notify of the request and we'll see how that comes. And up. this shift to allowing for that, third story mm -hmm. um is in line with sort of safety G I know you mentioned it but I just want to make sure that if we allow this then there'll be more that go forward that we really are making sure that we're protecting they'll the, be out the of residents the, they'll be out of the floodplain so those who occupy in their possessions will be out of the floodplain if we have ever an emergency down there that's what it will preserve okay and it doesn't put extra pressure on that floodplain having more nope no okay. the floodplain is there it's existing we know it's there, but they're protected by a dike. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor Carreras. Councillor Yusuf, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to staff for the presentation. Through the chair to staff, uh, along the same lines of what Councillor Carreras was addressing, since this application is within the floodplain and we do require that it not have a full basement suite or um, crawl space as such, are we able to then allow for the building height to be extended throughout the area, knowing that this is the floodplain. It's kind of a policy question on the back of this application, right. but of course it does affect it. Uh, again, so that we can provide a proper housing form that is safe uh, and above the level of uh, where the, the flood would be occurring, where, where individuals would be residing. Uh, are we able to uh, allow for that without having the applicant go through the the variance permit both now and possibly in the future thank you process to do that it is certainly possible council would have to look at an amendment to the either the area plan or maybe an amendment to the zoning bylaw that would permit higher homes in the lower hammond area we could define the area through some sort of a small quick study um but right now we're dealing with them as one-offs a lot of people don't want it there's two ways of doing it doing a crawl space or filling the site and then building on that. And we prefer the crawl space option because it doesn't impact the neighbors as much as filling sort of thing and having a strange arrangement like that. We're never going to be able to fill the whole area up to the to the FCL. So this is the way to proceed, I think. But yes, in the future, we could look at if council was willing to allow suites in the lower Hammond area, it has to be done safely and it would have to be uh, an amendment to our bylaws. Thank you for that. And just real quick, again, through the chair to staff, uh, would this particular building height be the standard that we're looking at, or would we be going to possibly 10 meters in height in the future? Developers always like to get as much as they can when they come down to these designing elements, right? Um, the bylaw is drafted, so at the midpoint of the roof, so you can get a bit height different, than it, but only for the roof design. Two-story homes on a, a crawl space, in my opinion, is more than adequate. Is it's adequate for this area? You wouldn't want to see crawl space in three stories and all that. It's getting to be a four-story structure almost. No. So our single-family zones are typically 
uh, 11 meters to the top of the roof mm -hmm. measured to the midpoint or eight meters for these large lots and council previous council particularly had some concerns with 11 meter homes in the infill areas it's an issue that we have to face given the housing needs and demand and the cost for everything but 11 meters is where a lot of uh, the new all new development is 11 meters the nine point nine and a half to the midpoint so I that seems to you. be where we're going. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Gallagher. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Those are my questions. Thanks, Councillor Youssef. Councillor Schiller. Thank you, Chair. Uh, through you to staff. Um, so sorry, can you just clarify, are, are secondary suites allowed in this area? They are, they are allowed under the zone, but the floodplain prohibits secondary suites in this area because they aren't out of the ele elevation of the floodplain. They have to be above that to be allowed from our zoning bylaw and building code point of view. So we have to elevate the structure to get them to that height so they could have a secondary suite. Other homes down there who are on the current grade cannot have secondary suites because of, it's really the sense of the potential floodplain damage that would occur to another dwelling. Even yes. though the main house is going to get wet, but we're not adding more people into the floodplain as the idea. Right. Yeah. No, but that is helpful because that is what I'm just sort of trying to wrap my head around. Um, I, 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 you know, I appreciate, yes, we want the suite to be up above the floodplain level, but I'm just trying to understand what that means for current homeowners. Um, that they're not allowed to have secondary suites That's as it correct. stands right now. They can't build it legally. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. There thank may you very be much. lots of them there. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schiller. And I'm looking around the floor and on Zoom again for any additional questions. Going once, going twice. Uh, seeing no other questions, calling for a vote, please, to move this item to the next council meeting. Um, and that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. The next item on the agenda is the community forum. So for members of the public who would like to speak during community forum, if you're participating electronically, please click on the raise hand icon and turn on your camera and unmute. And once called upon, clearly state your name and city of residence before beginning comments. If you're attending the meeting in person, please come forward to the podium where the chair will invite speakers and clearly state your name and city of residence before beginning your comments. Participants are reminded that there should be no discussion of public hearing bylaws, which have not yet reached conclusion. Each speaker will have two minutes to speak to council. A second opportunity may be provided once all speakers in the queue have had an opportunity to speak. The total time allotted is 15 minutes for the community forum. And if you wish to inquire about additional opportunities to address council, please contact the corporate officer. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And I see you folks in the audience in person and just checking with anyone online who wishes to speak. I see a head shake um, and... Hello, please state your name and city of Craig residence Spears, for the record. Maple Ridge. Thank you. And you have only 15 minutes. minutes. Oh, mackerel. You have two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like 15 to me. Um, I, I was here in support of uh, Josine Eichlenboom for her heritage designation. I, I must say they're uh, wonderful neighbors. And um, I've been to, I've got my eggs there this year. I bought half a lamb with another couple. And it's very tasty. It's nice knowing uh, the food is local. But the, of course, they're not just that. Uh, they're uh, community leaders. And uh, for many years, the Maple Ridge Music Society um, hosted the Candlelight Series down there for 40 years. 40 years. It's a tradition. No problems, no hassles. Everything was good. It's, def it's the definition of uh, classical chamber music. We had performers, I had tears in my eyes on more than one occasion during uh, uh, presentations there. The music was so beautiful and the, the quality of the performers was second to none. They came, they came there on purpose because of the chamber. The acoustics are amazing and it's a wonderful, wonderful room. So uh, of course, our, the business, uh, the bylaw people, it didn't, for some reason, got a hold of that. That they uh, and they insisted they get a business license. It's not a business. It's run by a society, a nonprofit society that gives bursaries to music students, and it was cut off 
after 40 years by the bylaws department. Uh, I guess the bathroom wasn't up to code. They were parking on the street. We don't have a lot of the, these types of traditions, especially internationally. Our name was on people's I'm Sorry to lips. interrupt, Mr. Spears. I know Two you're learning a lot, but could you okay, please Am I up there now? Yep, you're right. Okay, let's have the next person. Thank you, Mr. Spears. I didn't know a lot about what you May just I said. speak again, if nobody else? Let me just finish, if you don't mind. One second, Mr. Spears. Do we have a second round? For is that a permitted? And does do we does the speaker get a second two minutes? Yes. And I'm just before we go that, and I'm just going to look around the room again for anyone who wishes to address council. I'm going to look to the clerks for anyone online. All right, Mrs. Spears, you got another two minutes. Uh, I've just got a couple more sentences to go. Um, we need to bring them to heel. This is not the only situation that this has come about. And um, the bylaws department can't get away, get, can't get in front of such quality and because of what? The bathroom's not big enough or something? It really makes no sense to me. And I wish you would bring these, uh, bring them to heel and uh, uh, allow this tradition to continue. They would love to continue putting on the, uh, the concert series. I think it's six concerts per winter and uh, they're not invasive. I live on the street. A few people park on the street. Oh, it's no big deal. So why they cut this off, I just don't get. It makes no sense. And uh, it's a black mark on Maple Ridge's uh, reputation. And that's all over the world. So these people come, you wouldn't believe it where they come from because of the experience of having quality classical music in the type of venue that's built for it. Anyway, that's my two bits. Thanks. You're doing great, by the way. Thank you for taking the time, Mrs. Pierce. And uh, Madam Clerk, what's the next item for us? The next item is adjournment. Wonderful. Um, for mayor and council, we are, I see we are going to have a half an hour break for lunch before we come back to the next meeting. Um, and thank you, everyone. We have reached the end of our meeting.